Coming to you from beautiful Southwest Florida, this is the Naples Money Manager's News You Can Use with Don Litchfield Brown and John Kincaid. Good morning. Welcome to the Naples Money Manager's News You Can Use. I am Don Litchfield Brown. And I'm joined by... John Kincaid. Good yeah. to be here. Yes, he's the painter, you know, all that a light and everything. No, Wrong guy. Not Thomas, huh? Okay. Well, I'm obviously starting my Christmas attire already because I love the holiday season and I like to be bright and cheery. So with that, I've got a little bit, as I always try to bring to the table, something a little different. And this is about people who get a windfall of money. Okay. All and of a sudden type. All of a sudden. they call It's called sudden money, I guess, as well. Right. Susan Bradley, actually, I think, coined it that. Wrote a book about it. Yes, she's a friend of mine. How about that? Yeah, woohoo, I know an author. Um, but I was looking at the different types of money. So there's happy money, and there's surprise money, and then there's unhappy money. Yeah, so... What are the differences? So they talk about 15.7% of all NFL players oh. file bankruptcy in how many years do you think after they retire? How many years after? Oh, that's kind of a tough question because well, after only, they retire or yeah, after, after they, they sign retire. their first contract? No, after they retire. What percentage Three of years. NFL? No, it's actually 12. 12 years. So, but after 12 years, they have no money. Okay, so that's an interesting. And they're, and they're only thirty-two. And that's that's happy money. So happy money, when you get something like happy money from a bonus or something like that, that you tend to spend that on yourselves. True. So that's happy money. So you're all happy about that. And then, then there's surprise money. Okay, so wait though. Um, uh, one example of the happy money would be Shanique, Sh Shaquille. Sh I can't say. It. I say Shaquille O'Neal. Shaquille. Shaquille O'Neal, whatever it is. Shaquille O'Neal. Um, Brilliant businessman, by right. the way. Right. Okay, but he claimed to have spent several million dollars from one check in a single day on just cars and jewelry. So that was and happy. And tennis shoes for the neighborhood and boys. Happy and money, girls. though. But that was all happy. No, because happy money is spent on yourself. Oh. Okay, so now you get to the other kind, surprise money, which is all of a sudden, you know, a relative leaves you money or you got a. He, uh, a big birthday bon not bonus, something for your birthday, gambling winnings, a tax refund, those tend to be surprise money. So what happens there is it feels like an invitation to splurge on themselves, but that's not typically what happens. People start to feel guilty, so they spend that money on others to relieve that feeling. So we have some clients that are like that, we right? Do. We have Actually, clients my that have received over a million dollars in inheritance. Right? Giving it away. My mother was a classic example. She did not, if she got money, she couldn't give it away fast enough. Huh. I know. That's why we had to take care of her when she was older. Um, and then the other kind is unhappy money. What would unhappy money be? No idea. Well, let's say you get a life insurance policy because someone died, right? That's still happy money to me. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so what you tend to do with that money is spend it very utilitarian. So you don't spend it in the same way or even in a virtuous purchases, you know, to dampen any negative feelings about the windfall. So there's all kinds of money that you can receive out there. People treat it differently. I think it's really important as advisors for us to understand how people view the money they have. True. Where did they get it? Did a spouse get it because a husband died? Did she get it because his business was sold? Or did she earn it on her own? Or did she get it from some, her, her relative? There, there is probably all different. Right. There's probably more emotional, uh, what's the word? complexity yeah, that's a good word uh, when you deal with in investors it's not about you know it's not about strategies nope. or the stock market it is so complex when people are investing and great point about saying well what's really the impetus behind this investor because right. They're all different across the board. Absolutely. And that I think that's one of the things that makes us unique because you come in here and we really want to get to the root. Heart of, of the matter. Heart of the matter. Heart because we have heart, right? We have a lot of Sounds heart. Sounds trite, people, but let me tell you, after 32 years of doing this, 
We do have a lot of heart, and that's what differentiates uh, what we do. And we've been to pl- worked for places that don't have heart. Absolutely. And that's not any fun at all, which is why we have our own company. But it's, it, it's crucial because one of the things I always say is, well, what job? What do you want this money to do? What's its job? How do you feel? And it's, it's, it's all across the board, even as far as what is principle. I've said this before. I had a, did a... a um, a speech, which I love to do, by the way. If anybody has any groups they'd love me to come and speak for, I would love to do it. I've got some great ones. But I said, how many people in this room think principal is the amount of money you put in? No, I said first, how many people in this room think principal is the highest dollar it got to? Half the room raised their wow. hand. Half the room. And then I said, well, obviously. How many people think principal is the original amount you put in or any money you added, Right. And the other half put that up. So if you don't know that, how they view principal, and you're talking about protecting principal, they might be thinking you're talking about protecting the the highest point the market got to. So anyway, this is really, really important in any kind of financial world planning, uh, and that's what we do. So what would you like to talk about? Um, You know, it's been an it's I think it's been an odd year. Um, Aren't they all? (laughs) You know, they're very unique. Every year brings with it, obviously, something unique uh, as time marches forward. I think we've, uh, number one, we've done well for clients in a a challenging year. The the Dow's up maybe 12% and the S&P up 21. That sounds, you know, a lot of people could say, well, I would have just bought the index at the beginning of right. the year. Which would have- Not so, doesn't yeah. happen, never will. Uh, <laughs> it's very complex, especially with the Federal Reserve being involved this year. Uh, so then the whole argument continues to exist of will they hold rates longer, higher for longer? Uh, will they start to cut next year, et cetera, et cetera? Uh, I think consumers have made the biggest votes. If you look at Black Friday, up 10 percent sales over last last year. Cyber Monday, same thing. People spending nine to 12 billion dollars online. So people say that Amazon is not a good investment. I beg to differ. Well, I don't know. I tried to buy something on Amazon the other day, and I was on a different computer. And oh my gosh, they they put me Thank through you for being H-E double hockey sticks, as they would say on Golden Girls. And uh, <laughs> they put me through that. Not finally, that Don is that old. That's right. I'm not. Of course not. But anyway, it put me through so much hassle. I said, well, what credit card are you using? So I put the credit card number that they bill me to. Oh, that's not right. You pat. You failed the test. And I said, I had to call back, do it again. You failed the test again. I was like, fine, I'm not buying anything. I was so mad. But your point is well taken. So the point there is, is that the consumer has, has voted. Yes. You know, a lot of things go on in the economy, employment, uh, rates, uh, et cetera. But the consumer has said, we will continue to purchase in this economy. Right. So I, I, I think it's fairly positive. I mean, our biggest problem right now is probably and we're going to run out of time because it's 10 minutes, so I'm not going to say it. But I hope you will join us next week because we'll have a lot more stuff to talk about. I'm Dawn Litchfield Brown. This is John Kincaid. And remember, money matters, but most of all, and most importantly, you matter. Have a great day. Mm, mm, mm.